because CLT can span simultaneously in two directions, um, smaller holes can often be acceptable without any supplemental framing, and that's an advantage of CLT. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks, designing holes and openings in mass timber floor panels. That's the topic of today's video. I recently had a conversation with my colleague, Scott Brenneman, also with Woodworks, and we talked about this very topic, looking at the structural implications of designing holes and openings in mass timber floor panels. Do you need reinforcement? Are there rules of thumb that you can use to determine whether or not supplemental framing is necessary? We also touch on the fire and acoustics impacts of holes and openings in mass timber floor panels. So let's turn over to that conversation. All right, so Scott, a common question that we get is when somebody's designing a CLT floor panel, they need to have some openings in that panel, you know, kind of runs the gamut, small openings for pipes, larger openings, maybe for duct work, and, and maybe even larger than that for shafts. Um, what, mm -hmm. what information is out there? Are there kind of rules of thumb or design guides for how to design those openings in CLT floor panels? Yeah, Ricky, that's a, a good question, and it's probably something that will evolve over time, but currently there aren't any industry-wide rules on what size and locations of holes through CLT are structurally acceptable. Um, because CLT can span simultaneously in two directions, um, smaller holes can often be acceptable without any supplemental framing, and that's an advantage of CLT. Um, but what holes are acceptable without such framing will really depend upon the size and location and the loading on the panels. Um, design teams really have several different methods to kind of approach the design of such holes um, based upon the project's specific parameters. Um, you know, one simple method is to prefer, perform what we call a strip analysis, um, where you use a pattern of beams around the hole to represent the panel properties. This pattern of beams is sometimes called a grillage model and it can be hand calculations or something more advanced in a structural analysis program. Mm -hmm. um, something to keep in mind when doing this kind of analysis is that the strength and stiffness uh, values are different between the major and minor directions of the panel. Uh, and another more precise and more complicated approach is to use finite element plate analysis um, of the CLT in the holes. Um, again, such models need to take into consideration the orthotropic properties of the CLT. Um, and some structural analysis programs that can do finite element plate analysis, but don't support the asymmetric or orthotropic plates. So an engineer considering this route may want to look into what their program can do before going that way. All right, that's good. Um, like you mentioned, CLT is unique in that it does have that two-way spanning capabilities, different properties in each direction, like you said. When then I think of something like an NLT floor panel or a DLT floor panel, which is more of a one-way span, uh, system there, I think you can design for for distributing loads around an opening. It's probably a little bit of a different process. You know, I'm thinking about some some information in the NLT design guide and DLT design guide. Maybe running the 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 range of very small openings. Maybe it, there's no reinforcement up to inclined nails or screws to distribute loads to adjacent laminations. Um, and then you can kind of go to the next step is structural steel angles. And then really the last step is supplemental reinforcing, say additional beams drop below the panels. Um, so definitely options out there, but it kind of varies depending on the panel system that you're using. And like you said, obviously the size of the opening. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the structural side, but these openings can also have an impact on, on fire and acoustics, right? So from a fire perspective, what are some of the considerations there? It, yeah, that's a... The, the fire side, it's a very important because often the mass timber panel is the exposed component in a fire resistance rated assembly. And these fire ratings generally also apply to penetrations through that assembly. Um, fire stop manufacturers have really stepped up their support over the last few years. And it's probably efficient for design teams to work with such manufacturers to come up with appropriate penetration protections. Um, however, to educate designers on the different options available, um, Woodworks has included the known fire resistance tests performed on penetration systems in our inventory of fire resistance tested mass timber assemblies. Yep, yep, that's great. And similarly for acoustics, you know, the concern there would be penetrations create potential for flanking path, 
for sound to kind of travel up through the panel around that penetration. So I think that a lot of the details that you would use that you just mentioned for fire stopping will also be effective at limiting uh, transfer of sound up through around that penetration as well. We do have some resources on the Woodworks website, both a, a solutions paper and a list of acoustically tested mass timber assemblies uh, that again can help with some of these common uh, questions related to, to acoustics design for mass timber. So Scott, thanks very much. I think this has been a useful conversation. Um, good to chat with you about this. Yeah, thanks Ricky, this is great. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Scott. We also recently published an Ask an Expert article on the Woodworks website that goes into some more depth on this topic of designing holes and openings in mass timber floor panels. If you haven't seen this section of our website in the past, I do recommend you check it out. There are a number of topics in which we dive into more depth. Specific questions, these are questions that actually come up quite frequently from you, from the architects, engineers, developers, and contractors that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, reach out for free. We are a free resource to you, to the design community. That's why we're here to help you make sure that you successfully use wood and mass timber on your projects. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you later.